Hey guys, it's Jessica here. There is this particular type of comment that I've been constantly getting throughout my whole YouTube career, which are comments related to Korea and plastic surgery. It's plastic surgery and cosmetic treatment. More than 60% of adult Koreans underwent plastic surgery. I don't specifically find Korean beauty the ideal beauty, to be honest. They're the beauty of plastic surgery, and they look the same. Everyone knows that 90% of Koreans did plastic surgery to achieve the standard beauty. I'm pretty sure she has done plastic surgery with her face. How many plastic surgery did she get already? Korean people think they're beautiful when, in fact, most of them undergone plastic surgery. Koreans equals plastic surgery. And there are just so much more. And I think this is a very common stereotype that many people think of when they think of Korea, which I think is also slightly uh, contradictory to how the world looks at Korea at the moment, especially with Korea's big achievements like the K-pop industry, the K-drama industry, etc, etc. When I see such comments, you know, those comments that I just read off to you, I do get sad. First of all, I'm sad that my country is highly associated with the keyword of plastic surgery. Second of all, the fact that such negativity flows on my channel. That's why for today's video, I thought about talking about the Korean beauty standards. I think it is a mutual human instinct to look pretty, you know, to look presentable. And that obviously also existed back in the day, as in like during the Joseon dynasty in Korea. During the Joseon dynasty, the ideals of beauty stems from fair looking skin and cherry lips. This was done to accentuate uh, the elegance of their status, so their high social class status. And only in the end of the 19th century, new makeup styles and makeup products became more popular in Korea. So before that, the Korean beauty standard was just always associated with their social status through classism. And I know this is also the same in the Philippines with the Philippine history. So with the advent of Western culture in Korea, there have been more sophisticated makeup products that was introduced. And during the 1920s, the Japanese cosmetic products dominated the Korean market. However, by the 1960s, there was a time when the sales for foreign brands were banned in Korea. Thus, this was the only time when the Korean, you know, original Korean cosmetic industry began to flourish. So I think the first thing that I would also like to talk about is like, what is K-beauty? The definition, I would say, is quite vague because we are living in such a diverse world right now, so it's hard to categorize what is this and what is that. But then I think what symbolizes K-beauty would involve skincare steps. Skincare steps that would help you achieve like youthful, dewy, and just like nice skin. So having an intense or quite specified and customized skincare steps would be a part of what defines as K-beauty. And second of all, it would be, I guess, the use of Korean cosmetics, Korean products. I think the reason why the Korean cosmetic industry became so big, like worldwide, is also because of how specified it is to different types of skin. There are a lot of skincare brands in Korea and how they market their products is so well done. So this customization, I think, is one of the biggest and most important uh, features of Korean brands. Thus, the growth of Korean skincare cosmetics. Now, I would like to talk about uh, the Korean beauty standard. Like, what is the standard beauty of Korea? Honestly, as a Korean living in Korea, I can't give you a clear answer on this is the Korean beauty standard because even within Korea, it keeps changing. You know, like the trends changes very quickly in Korea. You know, we have this bali bali culture. Even I can't catch up with the trends in Korea. So for example, like a few years ago, monolid, like me, I have a monolid. This wasn't really considered like beautiful. You should always have the 
double eyelid. But then at a certain point, that notion just completely disappeared and said, oh, there is this such thing as Musang beauty. Musang means、uh, monolid. So Musang also became a part of that Korean beauty standard. And also, like way back then, having thick lips wasn't a trend. It wasn't a beautiful thing. So the thinner lips you have,、uh, the more beautiful you are. But then later on, it changed again. So now what is beautiful is having thick lips. But I think I could still tell you like the general、um, guide on what a Korean beauty standard is, which is like having a small face. I know this is weird, but in Korea, when we compliment someone, we say, oh, you have a small face. Having a pointed nose, having plump lips, and having big eyes. Secondly, having a pale skin. But this one, I would say, is now kind of an old concept. And of course, our body. So, of course, first of all, you have to be slim. And this trended, I think, because of Blackpink's Jenny. So, you should have like this 90 degrees like, shoulder line. And also, your body proportion is very important. So, they would say, like, oh, the p i u to pa. That means your body proportion is good. <laughs> your legs are longer than your upper body. We also have this adjective. Called Pertingshin. When you stand up, your face length times eight should be the size of your whole body. Because of this very specific beauty standards in Korea, plastic surgery became a big thing. Korea is considered as the plastic surgery capital of the world. So, in 2019, there's a study、uh, entitled The Beliefs and Trends of Aesthetic Surgery in South Korean Young Adults. And one of them said external appearance is now considered a pivotal factor that contributes to professional achievements and interpersonal relationships. So, lookism. Even though Korea as a country is making a lot of effort to lessen That kind of insecurity that people have in terms of the rigid Korean beauty standards, it is still inevitable how many people are interested in plastic surgery or any form of medical surgery to become more beautiful. There are a lot of ways to go on a diet in Korea, like there are different names for it. Also, in terms of plastic surgery, so when you say plastic surgery, What comes to your mind is like shoving plastic in your face. That's not only it. So, there are little medical surgeries, double eyelid surgery, nose like lifting shisu, where you put some kind of thread in it. You know, there's no plastic involved. It's just to make your nose more pointy. Or nowadays, there's the ipkori susu as well to make your end of the lips like up. Yeah, there are a variety, like you can't even imagine. And I think it's exactly these kind of subtle to big surgeries that you can do in Korea that granted Korea the image of plastic surgery. Like 90% of Koreans has undergone plastic surgery. But we obviously know that's not true. Like, just for my case, like the people around me, maybe around 20% have undergone plastic surgery. Some of you also asked me if I got plastic surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Yeah. I was almost about to though. And it's not like people underrate those people who's gone through plastic surgery. And it's also not like people support it too. You know, there are different types of people, different reactions from different people, even within Korea. But、uh, the general thoughts that people have on plastic surgery is that it's inevitable because it's such a famous thing. As long as you're happy, the one who gets plastic surgery, then it's fine. So definitely, plastic surgery is quite common in Korea. In fact, there are even different apps in Korea. Like Like Grab Food or Food Panda, you can kind of choose which hospital you can go to for plastic surgery. And within Korea, Gangnam, I would say, is the most famous spot for having a lot of plastic surgery h o s p i t a l That's why in Korea, there's even the word Gangnam Onni, which refers to women who look s like they've got a lot of plastic surgery. Like really, really, really tall nose, really, really big eyes, really, really plump lips, really, really V line face shape. Now, I would like To discuss about the effects of the Korean beauty standard. When you are constantly bombarded with images and constantly told of what a beauty should look like, you start to believe that and take that as the truth. And also, it often creates that desire to belong. You'd want to change your physical appearances into what the society defines as beautiful. 
and this eventually leads to self-hatred. Those beauty standards that like each country has, it doesn't come from nowhere. It usually comes from somewhere. And where does that somewhere start from? It starts from one person's opinion. And then a friend said, oh, I think I agree, too. Yeah, that becomes two. And this is basically how a certain standard forms. So there is some relevance to it. But the moment when people take that as the answer, the correct answer, I think that's where the problem starts, where people try too hard to fit themselves in that definition. So I think that mindset, which is to kind of accept who you are and love yourself you know it always begins from you loving yourself i know that sounds very 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 cliche however as i constantly keep mentioning on my channel things are changing very quickly in korea people are becoming more open and accepting so a lot of women initiate different kinds of movement where they reject the rigid beauty standards imposed by the society so that more and more women will feel more comfortable with their looks. And I guess as more and more people start to realize that, the Korean beauty standard may change again. The world is full of contradictions. Let's say for Filipinos, the reason why the keyword of K-beauty or K-beauty standard became a thing is because they are interested in those K-media. And when you see those K-pop idols, they're so beautiful and handsome. When you see those K-drama actors and actresses, they're so beautiful and handsome. And we Koreans think of the same thing and we are also influenced by them. Basically, it's in us. It's our kind of inevitable nature to always seek for something pleasing to the eye. So we need aesthetics in our lives. But at the same time, when there's a certain standard made by those instinct for aesthetics, then it becomes too toxic for us. So the question is like, how do we find the balance between that? We should respect other people, but at the same time, our thoughts also matter. I also admire those beautiful K-pop idols because they're beautiful, but that doesn't mean that I hate myself. Of course, I can't give you an answer to that because, again, I don't know myself. <laughs> what I know for sure is that these kind of discussions, where we really think about these social norms that exist in the Korean society or even in the world, we share our opinions, we just contemplate together. Um, realizing that these are very valuable conversations would help us kind of have a healthier mindset, not only in terms of thinking about a certain beauty standard, but also in terms of like living our lives like about our lifestyle and all that so yeah that whole talking might have been so here and there but i hope you guys still enjoyed it and please let me know your thoughts on this topic on the comments down below and uh, i'll see you guys in my next video bye bye